Aloha and welcome to Among the Jungle Podcast. I'm botanist and host, Shai Kaina, and I'd love for you to join me as I interview the incredible plant people of Instagram to create an audio vault of inspiring botanical knowledge while harnessing a deeper connection with us in our natural world. If you're ready, it's time to inspire your wild. Aloha, jungle dwellers, and happy spring, friends! I am so excited to share today's episode with you all because it's a topic very close to my heart. Self-care, and how intimately connected it is to all the other things that we care for in our lives. Most importantly, our plants. Keep an ear out during this episode for the new hashtag we can use to continue to grow together, to stay connected, and so that I can feature you guys individually on the community podcast page. Today we will learn how plant care and self-care are connected, how to thrive instead of survive, and practical tips to enhance your self and plant care practices. Welcome, my friends, to the jungle. I'm so excited you all are here because today we are talking about one of my very favorite subjects, self-care and plant care, and how the two together can allow you to grow and thrive right alongside your luscious jungle. You may or may not be surprised to find out that we are just basically houseplants with more complicated emotions, as the infamous meme says. It's important to remember that we required plants to develop into the species that we even are today. And so, of course, plants have a lot to teach us about ourselves. In regards to self-care, there are about five main categories of self-care. Physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual. We can truly connect with plants on each of these individual levels. And we will over time. But today, we're going to focus on physical self-care. In the realm of the physical body, they say that we can live for three weeks without food, three days without water, but less than three minutes without air. So it seems to me that air is the most important one, and so that's what we're going to begin with today. Let us begin with the breath. It's crucial for us to learn how to harness our breath. It's crucial because this is primarily how we control our emotions. Our breath feeds our body, our blood, our individual cells, our heart, our mind. This is how necessary it is for us to take mindful time to invigorate the body with breath. There is so much out there for us to learn about breath work. It's basically the new meditation in the spiritual community. So if you don't have a breath work practice yet, Let me give you a few tips and suggestions to help you get started on the journey, because this is something you should definitely be implementing into your daily practice. The first thing you should do to really absorb how powerful breathwork is, is to look up a gentleman by the name of Wim Hof. He's developed the Wim Hof breathing method, and he's used this method to really push the limits of the human body. He took a team of men in their underwear to hike Everest. He intentionally injected his body with a virus that he crushed within minutes using this breathing technique. He is truly the master of breath. And his breathing techniques are actually very simple and step-by-step. So I would definitely start by looking up some of his breathing techniques and some of his work as it's been scientifically backed and proven to be effective. Some other things you can do to engage your breath that may not necessarily be just a dedicated breathing technique would be to get involved in a yoga practice, a meditation practice, a yoga nidra practice. Any of these are all practices that also incorporate breath and that focus on breath. That is the whole purpose of yoga. It is to do action with the rhythm of breath. 
So it's all movement and flow to the rhythm of our breathing. And on the simplest level, you can get some great cardio and get your breath moving that way and also use an app like the Pine app, P-I-N-E as in the pine tree, which you can use to schedule reminders on your phone. That'll give you a little notification to let you know, hey, it's time to take a pause and take a few deep breaths or even just set a little reminder in your cell phone. But definitely don't overlook this one. It's super important. And there's a reason that I started with it. It is the most fundamental aspect of self-care that you can start with. A breathing technique is something that can ground you mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, in many of the ways that we discussed. It covers almost every single aspect of self-care. So I definitely recommend starting with a breathwork practice. Breathing is also super important to plants. And they do so through the stoma cells that are on the outside of leaves and all throughout the root system as well. They use these cells to open and close and absorb carbon and toxins from the air. This means that in order for plants to function at their most optimal level or really breathe, you need to keep the soil aerated and the leaves completely free of dust and debris. In nature, plants would have rain, wind, storms to keep the leaves free from the collection of particles and debris. But when we keep them indoors, we have to do this for them. So a couple of ways you can do this are the way I use, which is using a bowl of filtered water and a microfiber cloth to gently wipe down the leaves. Or depending on the size of the plant or if it has a lot of little leaves, you can also put a plant in the sink or in the shower and use a gentle sprayer. Be careful that the water temperature not be too hot or too cold and that the pressure not be too strong. You also want to keep in mind if you're doing this on a plant that maybe likes it a little bit more on the drier side, that you don't want to oversaturate the soil while you're spraying down the leaves. It could take a long time, depending on the type of plant, for that soil to fully dry out, and you could cause some actual damage by overwatering. So just keep that in mind while you're rinsing off your babes. It's also huge to remember that this kind of preventative maintenance really keeps down the outbreak of pests. By constantly touching, cleaning, and observing your leaves, you're keeping the chances of pests being able to build up and turn into an outbreak way, way down, therefore keeping all of your pest management way under control. Preventative maintenance is the best maintenance when it comes to pest control. Now it's time to talk about water. Water is the true fountain of youth, the rejuvenation of our cells and the pure motor oil that keeps our entire system running so smoothly. And it's absolutely crucial that you be getting enough. Most of us are not getting enough, and it's highly important that we be making clean water a pillar in our health priorities. What can you be doing to improve the water in your life? Well, you can start by drinking enough of it. And that means a gallon a day, no excuses. Do this for a week and let me know how you feel afterwards. I guarantee it's a million times better. Your skin will glow. Your smile will shine whiter. You will just feel more energized because you literally have more electromagnetism flowing through your body with all that water. To help you complete this goal is only the best app ever called plant nanny and it wants you to go and download this app right now plant nanny and it is the perfect app for making sure you get enough water each day you go ahead you download the app you select a plant and plant it in the pot every time you drink a glass of water you mark it in your app and it waters your plant if you don't water yourself your plants don't get watered and eventually they will die And so it's a really fun way to stay on track. I use this this app personally for nine months to get myself into a habit of drinking a gallon of water a day. I would like to warn you that it does feel a little uncomfortable at first because, of course, you're taking on a lot more water. You have to pee a lot more often. And that can be a little uncomfortable feeling at first. But 
just know that your body does get used to it and things do get more comfortable. Do not let that keep you from getting the water that your body needs every day. I promise the whole of your health will be a lot better if you're getting enough water. Also know that the quality of your water matters. Put down the water bottles. It's just unfiltered tap water that's killing our planet. And get a filter system for your sink or for your fridge. Or if you even want to invest a little further into your health journey, consider a Berkeley or King & Water system. Those are going to be further more advanced systems to really get all the nasty stuff out of your water. If you watch the documentary we mentioned in the last episode, number 009, The Sacred Geometry of Plants, we discussed a documentary called The Spirit of Water. It talks in depth about water and its many phenomenal properties. I highly, highly recommend digging into this documentary to shed some light on the quality of water in your home and teach you things you may never have known about how awesome water is. Again, that's called The Spirit of Water. And you can find that in the show notes at amongthejungle.com slash 009. As you guessed, plants like quality water as well. This includes filtered water, rain barrel water, and in some cases, water from people's fish tanks. However, just a word of caution with fish tank water as some plants don't like it as much as others. So I would research your individual plants to see if that's something that you could use at home. Also be mindful. It can be a little stinky. (laughs) Many of us are using just straight up tap water though. And the chlorine and other cleansing elements of this water can make the water very harmful to both you and your plants. Remember, you absorb water through your skin, just like plants do through their roots and some through their leaves. So being mindful of the quality of water in your home is really just good for everyone. A quick best practices tip that I implemented this year that I think has been super wonderful and helpful is that I suggest every single plant parent have a water meter if you do not have one yet. This will help you be consistent with your watering and allow you to meet the individual plant needs of specific plants. It's so easy to just take it around in one hand and your water can in the other and give every single plant what it needs on a personal level. This has been a game changer for me this year. Now, let's talk food. But I have a couple of questions first. Did you know that Americans consume less than 0.001% of all available edible plants in the world? Did you know that the most nutritious foods on the planet are all plants? And did you know that plants are the only source of protein on the planet? Yes, that's right. Animals don't produce protein. They derive it from eating plants. Now, I'm not here to convince you to develop a plant-based diet or anything like that, but I am here to encourage a larger percentage of your diet be dedicated to the purest form of nutrient you can possibly get, which you know comes from Mother Nature's garden. Plants are friends and food. And how cool is it? The plants not only provide us with absolute joy, but they also provide the healthiest fuel for our bodies. And we are capable of growing that food in our very own home, patio, yard, or garden. So let's take this opportunity to grow together. I want to see where you're growing out there. So on both my personal page, Aloha Shy, and the podcast page, Among the Jungle Podcast, I'm going to be using the hashtag grow together. Let's grow gardens and share this time together. I'll be sharing your gardens along the way. So please, please, please use this hashtag so I can share your garden photos along the way. Now, it's important to remember that our food also needs food. Yep, plants also need food. And there are many organic routes you can take to accomplish this. An organic garden, both indoors and out, is all I recommend. And we will definitely talk about organic gardening more in future episodes. But composting is a great way organic gardening can be accomplished and that you can also add nutrient to your plant soil. Just a quick for your information, did you know that the kitchen scraps that you send to the dump never break down? This is because landfills are meant to be storage units 
and not meant for things to break down inside of them so they don't seep into the groundwater. But all the organic material that is sent to the landfill is never provided oxygen and therefore it never breaks down. Instead, it becomes methane, making kitchen scraps the third largest methane polluter in the world. There are many low-cost ways to have a compost bin at home. Heck, I had one with worms in it in my apartment in college. And it's the most environmentally sound way to give your garden nutrient and to reduce and reuse your waste. So if you're absolutely not able to compost at home, I would suggest calling your local trash service. They may have a community compost that you can give your kitchen scraps to instead. Other commercial organic fertilizers that I've used, I will link in the show notes at amongthejungle.com slash zero one zero. There are also list probiotics, which are something many people don't know is required for soil, but Even with nutrient in the soil, plants can't uptake that nutrient without probiotics. And it's the same in your system as a human. So that's why it's very important for both us and your soil to have probiotics. And lastly, I will include links to the living soils I use for all the plants in my home that incorporates things like hummus, worm castings, kelp, oyster shells, and all kinds of magical things from the ocean floor. Again, all of those will be linked in the show notes for this episode. There's two more aspects of physical self-care I would like to talk about today. One is movement. Plants are on a completely different time scale than humans, but we know from time-lapse videos that plants are always dancing to the flow of life. I encourage you to take this perspective within your own body. Movement is life. And that's also the fastest way to what? We talked about it earlier in the episode. It's the fastest way to alter your emotions. Tony Robbins says altering your physiology will automatically alter your mental state. So when in doubt, dance. Move that beautiful body with joy. And always remember, as we learn from our houseplants, a little movement is all it takes to be facing the sun again. And the last thing I want to touch on is our environment. Look around you. Do you have all that you need to thrive? Not just survive, but really thrive? Look at each individual item you own. Does it bring you joy? Does it weigh you down? What vibration are you creating with the items you keep around you? Did you know that every single item you own is either enhancing you or draining you energetically? Your subconscious mind is keeping a running catalog of every single item you own, even if it's a misplaced paperclip in the desk. It all affects our mental state and overall personal well-being. We want our space to reflect us, our experiences in life, and bring with it a sense of security and joy to dwell there. That's why most of us brought plants home to begin with, right? So take this time to look around your space and really reflect on what you no longer need in your life and what changes you'd like to make. Plants also have personality and as such thrive when their environmental needs are met as well. Remember, even two monsteras in the same room do not have identical needs. Each plant is unique and individual. Outside of sunlight and temperature needs, you can also play music for your plants, speak words of affirmation, and pair them with pots and soil mixes that complement them as a species and as an individual being. This is especially understood and celebrated in the art of bonsai, which if you haven't heard episode three with Mike Lane, I highly, highly recommend that one. And I would like to end with this. Plants teach us that balance is the path to fulfillment. Too much water or not enough, too much nutrition or not enough, too much light or not enough, and we simply cannot thrive. Plants never give more than they have taken, and they never take more than they can use to create. They are perfect examples of stewards of this planet, protecting us providing for us, 
and proving that when we work together in collaboration, all of life is possible. So do me this favor and listen to and take care of your body, for it is the vehicle in which you will use to share in all your life experiences. And listen to and care for your plants, because they have a lot of earth wisdom to offer you, if you will only listen. I don't know about you all, but I very often find that the care I'm giving my plants is in direct correlation to the care I'm giving myself. It was my goal to leave you with an inspired new way to look at plant care and self-care so we can begin to see that the way we care for one aspect of our lives is truly the way we care for all aspects of our lives. My challenge for you this week is to take a photo of your plant care or self-care routine and tag me at Among the Jungle Podcast and then follow Aloha Shy and Among the Jungle Podcast on Instagram. You can find the show notes for this episode and anything I recommended along the way at amongthejungle.com slash zero one zero. And please, please, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and share with all your favorite plant friends. I hope this episode inspired your wild. And I hope you see plants as our self-care mirrors, reflecting back to us which aspects of ourselves most need attention, care, love, and healing. Until next week, jungle dwellers, love, light, and aloha. I am so grateful to the plants that bless this beautiful earth and to you for choosing to nurture a wild place inside of your heart. I hope this episode inspired your wild, and I'd love to hear your feedback, suggestions for future guests, and other botanical notes at amongthejungle.com or amongthejungle on Instagram. It's been lovely exploring this exotic world with you today, and I look forward to where the journey takes us next week. Mahalo for tuning in and stay wild.